we do the T analysis thing here um, on the um, the tension system, starting from here T1, obviously. Okay, T1 goes around a corner there. T1 there. It's T2 at the pulley. Okay. And the T1 goes around a corner. T1 just here. Okay. Um, so, Adam, your question about do, do we need a second prusik there? No, we don't, do no, we? Because what's that holding? T1. That's right. That's right. One unit of tension. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, uh, interestingly, at the anchor, it's T2, isn't it? So, when we, if we're thinking about force, because every one of those is going to be different. All three of those anchors are holding a different load, basically, different T value. Um, so, uh, T1 goes around there, T1 plus T2, T3 in front of the prusik. T3 goes around the forward the pulley, T3 there, so it's T6 at the tandem prusik, it's very good. Uh, T3 goes around there, T3 on the other side, so the middle anchor is T6, that's important because it's the same as the track line, wasn't it? T6, T6, T3 goes around there, around there, it's T6 on the other track line, so the two tracks are both T6. And then, of course, T3 ends up up there. So our anchors, respectively, are T2, T6, T3. They're all different from one another, okay, yeah. Uh, the load cell thing works purely by virtue that if we plug the load cell in there, because we know that's T6, it's the same value as the track line. So when we've got the load on, whatever the load cell is reading is the load on each track line. You can get a real-time feedback loop thing there, yeah. So if our... Um, Say our, our, our line in the sand is two and a half kilonewton that we're aiming at. We don't want to exceed that on the system. We can be tensioning with the load out on the system. Someone's looking at the load cell, at the enforcer or whatever, and as soon as it gets to that threshold, you just go stop pulling and you know you're there. Takes the guesswork. There is no guesswork. Mm -hmm. You're actually looking at it, yeah. That's one of the things.